Hey YouTube, you're watching Ready Set Drone, and today I have the E56 from Isheen. Uh, it's a little foldable drone that flies with a weird little joystick thing, and that was what intrigued me, so stay tuned and we'll check it out. So first of all, thanks to Isheen for supplying me the E56. Uh, it does come in a pretty cool little package. Um, it's a zipper pouch. I always like it when these have some sort of a package to keep them in and you can uh, throw the box away. It's, it's very nice. So when you unzip it, it has actually has a little lavender scented uh, packet in the box. I imagine some people have complained about these, um, these uh, foam boxes smelling funny and so I'm sure that's why they put that in there so it does smell of a nice lavender when you open it up so kudos to Isheen for thinking of that uh, I thought it was kind of funny uh, here is the actual um, quad itself and the remote control it comes with the quad which is like this and you know has a little bit of a spark canopy to it um, here is the uh, remote which is almost like a little um, I don't know, it's a weird little thumb joystick that you turn here and then buttons here, powers on the side, takes two AAA batteries that go in the bottom. Uh, it's got pretty decent instructions. I've actually already looked at the instructions there in here and they kind of give you the lay of the land, what to do. Spare props, little screwdriver, and a USB charging port, which is always nice. Now the USB charging port goes directly into the battery and the battery is on the bottom. You have to take it out to charge it. The way you take it out is you push down on this little button right here, and then you slide it over, and then it pops out like that. And you can see the connector is here in the back of this thing. Now I've already charged it. I have not flown it yet, but I've charged it. So I'm gonna pop it back in place. And, oh, I just turned it on. Uh, turn it back off for a second. Now one thing I also like about this guy is the solid click you get when you put the arms in place. Some of these little selfie drones um, don't give you that sort of audible click, and so you don't know if the arms are all the way in place or not, but these definitely are. You don't have to do anything to release them. They click in and out, just like that, so it's kind of nice. Um, now, as I said, you can either fly it with, um, I think there's two different ways to fly it. One is using the app that you can uh, get on your phone, and there's a QR code in the book for Android and iOS um, to be able to uh, use the app from that QR code. Um, I'm never a big fan of flying these things via Wi-Fi, so I'm not gonna do that. Although I imagine that is how you um, record video. So I'll probably download the app and just use it to record video, but still fly with the, um, fly with the remote, hopefully. Um, it is called the selfie drone and it does have a little camera on the front now I can tell you that the quality of these things in terms of pictures and video I've never been too impressed with So this this thing you're gonna fly for fun, but it's not gonna take great Video I don't think so the other way you can fly it is actually using this remote and tilting the remote this must have some sort of a accelerometer or joystick or uh, sorry accelerometer or uh, gyroscope in it I'm not really sure how that works, but I'm anxious to try it out. So I'd say let's do this. Let me go ahead and download the app and uh, get it on my phone so we can see what's going on. So I'm just gonna scan the QR code. I just turned on the uh, remote. I'm gonna push the stick up and down. The way you bind it is you pull down, push up, pull down, and then you hear that double beep that just happened that uh, connects it. There is a Wi-Fi network called uav dash numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that, connect to it, and I'll open up the Isheen Fly app, and we'll hit play, and we should, yeah, there's our live view of the table. You can see here, that's what it looks like. And a little bit of delay, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can uh, record video. So it looks like I'm recording video, and I'm going to see if I can fly using my uh, using the remote. So I hold down this button. So you hold down the top button to take off and land.
All right, so it is tilt. All right, so. Uh, yeah, I'm tilting the thing. I'm tilting and the thing is uh, flying where I tilt. And you use, all right, so you use the joystick for the yaw. And use the uh, use the tilt of the thing to fly. It's pretty. It's actually pretty uh, surprisingly uh, accurate. Now I'm gonna. Uh, there are some instructions here. Let me go ahead and bring it back here and land it. It's a kind of weird experience. All right, so I just landed it. Okay, so it does look like the uh, videos and pictures um, write to your camera roll on your phone, meaning that uh, there's not a local SD card, but it writes to your phone, as far as I can tell. There are several buttons on this thing. The uh, top button switches it from high to low rate. You hear that double beep? That's high rate. Oh, three? That must be high rate. One beep is low rate, medium, high. So. I'm gonna put it in medium. Um, the joystick is to take off and land, and it's also for altitude and yaw. So this is basically like your left stick. The um, button three is for headless mode. That's this top button up here. Uh, button four calibrates it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold it down and calibrate it while it's on the ground. So when I hit that button, the light started blinking to tell me that it's calibrating the um, gyroscopes. This bottom down here is for your um, uh, emergency stop meaning you'll kill the motor so if you need to kill the motor you hit this bottom button down here uh, this over here is your light control so you can turn your lights on and off which I can see it's working and when I hit it once the lights go off when I hit it again the lights come on and then finally um, there's power switch over on the side so I'm gonna try to remember all that um, mostly just gonna use the uh, tilt of this thing and the joystick to fly so I'm gonna go ahead and roll video one more time so I'm in rate rate two, and I am using the tilt of the joystick to fly. And I will say it is a little bit challenging to fly this guy like this. There's rate three. It's definitely the most uh, most um, responsive. Where you get into trouble is, of course, when you're uh, not used to flying this thing and you make you twist the yaw. So you tilt forward, it goes forward. You tilt right, it goes right. Uh, I'm gonna try the headless mode. Let's see which one is headless. Number three. Okay, now I should be in headless mode, so I should be able to control it a little bit easier yeah okay headless works flying in headless and it's uh, staying you know oriented with with uh, respect to me yeah headless is definitely uh, much much easier with this thing than than regular with all the tilting that you're doing All right, I'm gonna see if I can bring it in and land it on the table here. Wow, that was close. All right, let's see if I can bring it in and land it. Yeah. <laughs> Landed. So the Eshin E56. Uh, it is a cool looking little quad, I'll say. It does look a little tiny bit like a Spark, but um, it is much cheaper and uh, weighs a lot less. You see it's got nice white LEDs in the front, red LEDs in the back. There is a button where you can turn those off and on. It's this uh, button right here. It turns them off and on, which is kind of cool that you have that. 
Um, it is challenging to fly. I have to say the whole tilting thing takes some getting used to. And I've been flying quads a long time. Uh, it's a little bit breezy today and I had a bit of a hard time flying this thing. Definitely easier to fly in headless mode than, uh, than it is in regular mode because of that whole tilting thing. Um, it does record video, it does record photos. They're okay, they're not great, but um, you know, for goofing around, that's a pretty good thing. Uh, I don't recommend this if you've never flown a drone before because it is a little harder to fly. But if you're looking for a challenge and wanna learn how to fly doing this tilt thing and using your thumb on this uh, joystick, it's challenging. And um, I would think that if you kinda got good at that and got used to how it flies, you could actually uh, master it. I haven't yet, but uh, I think it could be done. But again, there's a learning curve. And so if you wanna get one, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, as I said, I wouldn't recommend it if you've never flown a drone before, but if you're looking for a challenge and wanna learn how to fly in a new way, the Ishin E56 might be just for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone, and please hit that subscribe button.